What's up guys, thanks for joining another episode of Cars, Bikes, and Coffee. I am Kurt and we are working on a 1974 260Z. Today, we are gonna work on the cylinder head. So we've got our parts in and now we need to install them. But first, we need to start cleaning. We've got the head back from the machine shop and they bench tested it checked all the flow and everything looks great. So really what we need to do is just go through and give this a good clean. Uh, we've got some bolts to remove and it looks like we have a broken off stud. So we're gonna need to get the welder out to pull that. Everything that was gone through, the machine shop did a flow test and everything looked great. So we didn't end up needing to do a valve job as one was done on the head. We just didn't know which one uh, it was performed on. So what they did is they went ahead and re-shimmed the cam towers. We did get our regrind from Delta Cam Shaft, highly recommend, so we'll look at that in a minute. And we also got our rocker arms resurfaced, so we'll as well look at that. First, I think, let's go ahead and get all of these studs and the fuel pump stud and we'll go from there. So when it comes to removing studs, most have seen this, but just to show it, we take a nut and we thread that on. Then we take another nut and thread that on as well. And what we wanna do is tighten the nuts against each other. So they're real tight. And then on the inner nut, I'm going to go ahead and treat this as a bolt. And sometimes, like this case, this is really stuck in here. So we're going to have to really wrench this down. And you might even have to soak with like PB Blaster or some kind of penetrant. There we go. And then we just remove our nuts and go ahead and use them on all the other studs. And of course, the other way is to use a pair of vice grips. And that would be if you're not going to reuse your studs. All right, so now that we have all of our studs out and the coolant right angle and the fuel pump studs, what we want to do is go ahead and chase all of our threads. And a chase is not like a tap, but it has a line cut in the thread. So that way it just cleans threads and it doesn't cut threads. So that way we can go through and just get all of these threads all nice and near new. So what we're gonna use is just an, an electric ratchet and then start it by hand and then insert it all the way and then pull. <laughs> We're gonna thread it all the way in and then thread it out. And then go through all of the threads. All right, so we've cleaned out all of our threads. We've got them all nice and ready, except for this one that we need to weld out, so I'll deal with that later. But what we're gonna do now is take it outside and we're gonna use this mag wheel cleaner that's for aluminum or cast alloy. And we're gonna spray it on and we're gonna let it soak for about 30 seconds. And then we're gonna wash it off and get it all out of the head. And then we're gonna dry it off with a towel. So I'm gonna take it out and I'll bring it back and I'll show you how we did. All right, so that mag cleaner really worked well to get a little bit of that dullness out and some of the spotting that was on the aluminum. Now what we're gonna do is take a brass wire brush and just go over it and clean up and kind of, it doesn't polish it, but kind of gives it a little bit of a brighter look. So we're gonna do that now. All right, check that out. Definitely the brass brush makes a huge difference. Makes it a little shinier. Doesn't really polish it, but just smooths out the surface. Let me flip around the head and show you the other side. Not 100% perfect, but you know, it's a lot better than having to paint a cylinder head. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this bolt out. 
hopefully. So we're gonna do this by MIG and we're gonna just weld in the nut. We're gonna have to build this up a little bit so we can get this nut welded on. But this is gonna be my first time using my new welder, so I'm gonna give it a shot and might have to adjust the settings, but uh, here goes nothing. did it. So now what we want to do is go ahead and obviously clean this up and then use the thread chaser to clean that up. It only took a total of five nuts. All right, so we are going to go ahead and replace the valve seals first before we put the cam in. And this is mainly because of the tool that I have for compressing valves. This is a lot easier to do without the cam in. I'll leave a link in the description below for this tool. It works really well and it's not that expensive. The one thing I would do is use a plastic cap or something similar from a water line and that way it keeps the metal end from marring the back of the valve. All right, so let's collect what we need to do this job and I'm gonna use a plastic tray to keep all the parts in. Uh, magnetic, I have no idea what you would call this, but this with a magnetic tip is great for pulling the keepers out. We're gonna use a screwdriver just in case, and I'm gonna use a 12 millimeter deep socket, and this is just to tap in the valve seals just in case. And in some cases you need a little bit of persuasion as well, some assembly lube and some oil. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is put the head on its side and then go ahead and loosen the spring retainers. Now with those keepers out, we're gonna move the tool out of the way and pull the inner and outer spring. And look at that. We have a broken valve guide. I could not have planned that. All right, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is stop at this point for this valve. I'm gonna remove this one out and then we'll go ahead and start working on this other one but this will have to go to the machine shop. We're gonna put our springs and a retainer off to the side, push our valve out, and I'm gonna go clean this up just a little bit on here. Wanna be careful as we did have the head tested, so we don't wanna mess the valve seats. So just gonna clean this up and just run it through the polisher really lightly. And now with our screwdriver, we're gonna go ahead and just very carefully pry the old valve seal off. Gonna go ahead and take our new valve seal and put just a little bit of assembly lube. You can put oil, but just to get the seal lubed, we're gonna push that over. I wouldn't say this is necessary, but better be safe than sorry is I'm gonna take that 12 millimeter deep socket and just tap it a little bit. Make sure that that clip is in its seat. So we cleaned up the valve just with a brass wheel and just touched it with a polish wheel. And some people soak their valves in oil. I'm just gonna put a light dab of oil on the stem and then reinsert the valve. We have good movement. We're gonna go ahead and put our spring back on, get our tool in place. So we have our inner and outer, and you wanna make sure that your spacers, if you have them, are there. And I'm just gonna tighten this just so the lip of the valve stem is just above 
the retaining clip. Now we're going to tilt the head back up. It's a little easier to place the keepers. We're just going to pop that in there. And once the keepers are in place, we can loosen our tool. You want to make sure that they are seated in. So now that we have at least this valve done, we're going to go ahead and contact the machine shop and have them replace that guide. They'll have to press it out and then install a new one. And that way we can then install the cam and finish up this head. All right, so we are back from the machine shop and they put in our valve guide. So what we're gonna do is just jump right into getting this one finished. So now we're done with the valve. So now what we wanna do is go ahead and work on the cam. And to do that, we're gonna clean all of our towers. All right, so now for our camshaft, we have a pretty much like a stage two grind on our cam. And this is from Delta Camshafts. And we have them do all of our work on cams and they do a great job. So if you're ever in the need, reach out. So we're gonna go ahead and get out our cam. And what we wanna do is go ahead and put assembly lube on all of our contact surfaces with the cam tower. So we're gonna take our assembly lube, put generous amounts on each, go ahead and spread it. And then very carefully, we are going to pass it through the cam towers and not forcing it. Once it's at the end, we're just gonna rotate a little bit just to spread the assembly lube. All right, so now that the cam is in place, what we're gonna do is install our thrust plate. And you'll note that it only goes on one way. If you put it on backwards, you won't be able to line up the holes. So we're gonna go ahead and install that. Get these bolts finger tight, and then we will torque these to spec. Now that we have our thrust plate installed, you can put the timing cam gear on if you want. I'm gonna wait until we mate the head to the block, but now what I wanna do is go through and loosen all the rocker arm adjustments and using wrench like so, makes it a little easier to loosen these. So now I'm gonna go through and loosen all of them and seat them all the way down. And that just means to loosen them up and put them in the lowest positions. Now that we've bottomed out all of our rocker arm adjusters, we wanna go ahead and take a Sharpie or really what you'd like to use is blue machinist ink and cover the, where the rocker arm touches the lash pad. And so what we've done is we've put Sharpie up there. So that's covered. And now what we're gonna do is go ahead and put assembly lube on all of the top of the adjusters where they meet the rocker arms and as well the cam lobes. And now with that lube, we're gonna go ahead and place our lash pads in the springs. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our lash pads and place them into the valve springs. We're gonna go ahead and install the rocker arms. Now these have been resurfaced and we had them just lightly resurfaced because we went with a regrind on the cam. And what we're gonna do is just start with one and go and check the white pattern. And we're gonna put the heel of the cam lobe down with the toe facing up and put the adjustment end on first and try and slide it over. And now that we have our one rocker arm in, we're gonna go ahead and adjust the valve lash as you would if it was installed on the car. And we're gonna use the cold settings. Now that we have the valve lash set, we're gonna go ahead and rotate the cam and we're gonna use these knobs with an adjustable wrench to move it. And you want to make sure the blocks of wood you have under the head aren't in the way of the valve that's opening. Now that we've 
spun it a couple times, we're going to go ahead and loosen it. Make sure the heel is up of the cam. But what we want to see is a middle white pattern in the pad and on the rocker. And so we have that, so we are good. If you didn't, you would have to get different thickness or have the machine shop sand down the pads. So now that we're good, we're going to put a little bit of assembly lube on the back of the pad and reinstall this. So I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera and I'll meet you at the end. All right, so we've got everything installed. I suggest putting in each of the springs as you go so you remember which ones that you've done. So the spring on the bottom first and then pop it onto the rocker arm. And always take notes because I can never remember. So the intake exhaust and which ones that you've done. All right, guys. So we finished the head and it is ready to get onto the block. So we'll go ahead and do that in the next video. So thanks so much for watching. If you guys like what you see, consider subscribing. It does help us out. Also follow us on Instagram at Cars, Bikes, and Coffee. And until then, I'll see you next time.